Hi, I'm Dr. Adam Forbes. I'm a forest ecologist. I'm currently going through a series of videos on what is forest ecology. Uh, the first video was looking at forest microclimate, and now this video is going to be looking at the role of disturbance in forests. We're going to look at a range of different disturbance types in different forests around the country, and then we're going to use a case study of one Nio tree, which is behind me, which has died in Webb's Bush at Tomato Peak and the effect that that tree's death has had on the forest. So come with me and let's go through some forest disturbance. So what exactly do I mean by forest disturbance? Ecologists have defined disturbance as a discrete event in time that causes a disruption. The disruption might be seen at the ecosystem, community or population level. Disturbance might change the availability of resources, substrates, or the physical environment. There are also three main ways of quantifying disturbance. Firstly, by extent. Disturbance might be localised, such as from mortality of a single tree, or the whole forest might be affected, such as what might result from the effects of a pathogen attack. Secondly, the frequency of disturbance is ecologically important. Tree mortality is likely to occur over time spans of decades to centuries, whereas major earthquakes might only be repeated over much longer time frames. And thirdly, the magnitude of disturbance. Large landslides are likely to result in complete loss of forest cover, whereas wind throw might only affect the forest canopy tier. So now that we've covered the basics of forest disturbance, Let's leave the case study site to have a quick look elsewhere at a few different agents of forest disturbance. With human existence in Aotearoa New Zealand, fire has and continues to have a major influence on forest cover. This is particularly the case in the dry eastern areas of the country. Here, in this photo, Fire has burned through forest on the Port Hills near Christchurch City. Periods of very strong wind can cause what we call wind throw, that is canopy trees being blown over. Shown here are root discs of a group of wind thrown trees. Once a small opening in the forest develops for wind throw, the surrounding trees, which haven't until this point grown on the forest edge, can also become vulnerable to wind throw. Flooding is likely to have shaped the forest growing on alluvial surfaces on the river floodplain. This area of riparian beech forest has been heavily disturbed and young beech forest is now establishing in the high light environment created by the loss of forest canopy. Strong earthquakes cause ground shaking and soil movements which can sever tree roots or destabilise entire hillsides. Other examples of forest disturbance result from freezing, coastal processes, volcanic eruptions, browsing, breakage, burrowing, disease or from human influences. So let's go back and have a look at the effect that the mortality of one Nio tree has had on the forest at our case study site. Once the tree dies, the leaves are lost, which results in a localised canopy opening where more light can penetrate to the forest understory. Over time, these twigs and branches will decay and fall to the forest floor. Light drives photosynthesis, which is a process that provides energy for plant growth. So light availability is one of the main resources required for forest tree growth. With the increase in light transmission comes a greater availability of light at the forest floor, which can drive a flush of new seedling regeneration. We will cover forest regeneration and forest succession in a later video. As the root system of the dead tree decays, the entrained nutrients and carbon will be released to the surrounding environment. Decay will be aided by biota that specialise in decomposing dead vegetation. So we can expect a localised flush of nutrients from decaying roots and woody material. Over time, the dead tree will disintegrate and will be incorporated into the forest ecosystem with the resources released becoming available for other aspects of the forest ecosystem. Where wood is lying on the ground, it is positioned in a moister environment compared to wood that is dead standing. The moister environment of the forest floor drives faster rates of decomposition. Thank you for watching this video on forest disturbance, I hope you liked it. 
If you did like it, give the video a thumbs up. If you've got any questions or comments, leave them in the comments below. Remember to subscribe to this channel so you get notified of the next video. And if you know people that will like this video, please share it with them. Once again, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time.